So the formula is A equals payment times one plus R over N to the NT power time over the R over N. So I'm making $130 monthly into my retirement savings. Uh, we're getting monthly accrual, 7% interest, and we're doing it until I hit my 20 years. So 15 years. So we have amount equals 130. R, the rate is 0 0.07. The T is 15. And the number is 12. So the first, a couple of things I do, and this is just me being me, is find out what R divided by N is. So I take the rate, which is 0 0.07, divided by the number we do, which is 12, so 0 0.00583 repeating. So the reason I do this is because there are one, two times this comes up. So it's just a way for me to make my life easier by looking at those two. The other one I end up using a lot is NT. So N times T is 15 times 12, so 180. When in doubt, put it in your calculator. 15 times 12, 180. Uh, because chances of you being able to spout off numbers off the top of your head, probably low. I could do it, but I'm weird. So from here, we could put everything in the calculator or and put it in here. So 130 times. Uh, so I already have the this RN, so I just put one to it. So 1.0058333. And then take that to the net to the 180th power. And then we divide it by 0 And so doing the math, 1.058 3 to the 180th power is $27,000 times 130. Wait, what? 1.0058 to the 180th. 2.8. There we go. So 2.8498945 times 130. So that gives us up top 370.36285. And all that's divided by 0 0.0058333. So that gives us a total of. $63,491 and 14 cents. So my wonderful retirement plan here from Maricopa County has me getting $63,491 after 15 years of putting in. Great. So now that I have that, so let's say I get lucky I have uh, total at the end is 64,000. Uh, I want to withdraw monthly. So if my expenses, let's say, are $2,000 a month. So $2,000 a month times 12 is $24,000 yearly. Uh, the interest rate is 4% because that, uh, let's call it 2%, but 4%. Uh, so we're going to assume that I still get interest on this. So what or how long will it last? Another question that can be asked. So I have $64,000. So the formula for this, sorry, 
is A equals payments one minus one plus R over N to the negative NT over R over N. Bugs me. So our A, how much we have at the end is 64,000. <clears> our payment is how much we get out, so $24,000. Our rate is 0 0.04. Our N, which is going to help us a lot, is 1. And we're looking for T. So 64,000 is equal to 24,000 times one minus one plus R, R, sorry, R over N is 0 0.04 divided by one, so 0 0.04 to the negative T, because I don't, N is one, but I don't have T. And all this is over. Zero point, oh, sorry, 0 0.04 divided by one or 0 0.04. So uh, first thing I do, times each side by 0 0.04. So $64,000 times 0 0.04 is 25.60. And that's going to be equal to 24,000, one minus 1.04 to the negative T. <clears throat> do you end up, let me see if, what this ends up being. You may not do the, this way. So dividing both sides by 24,000. We end up with 0 0.01667 repeating. And that's going to be equal to 1 minus 1.04 to the negative t. So this, you'll never actually do these, so I'm just going to get rid of this. Just looking at this, this gets hard and annoying. It would be something you would do for algebra, which you're not doing. So we're not going to do this. But no, it's not going to be that long, like four or five years. Uh, what you'll end up doing is you will not end up looking for N or T. You're probably going to be looking for A or the payment. That's what you're going to end up looking at. Um, so we could say, uh, if I plan on living 20 years, how much will I get out, uh, for the $64,000 I have in? given a 4% rate. So this one, a little easier to do, a lot easier to do. We still have the 64,000. Uh, we're assuming that you're getting one payment out per year. We have a rate of 0 0.04 um, and we have a time of 20 years. So when you do this, you still have the same thing. It's A equals payment, one minus one plus R over N to the negative NT 
all this is over r to the n. Two, you want to get the payment by itself. So if I divide both sides by payment, to one over payment, basically. I get A over payment. It's equal to Uh, one minus one plus R over N, the negative NT over R to the N. Then I can divide both sides by A. which cancels out the A here. So one over payment is gonna be equal to one minus one plus R over N to the negative NT over A times R over N. And then I can flip everything. So I take it by the reciprocal. So I do it, <clears throat> I can basically flip everything upside down and it would be the same thing. So I can do payment, it's gonna be equal to A times R over N over one minus one plus R over N to the negative NT. So instead of doing all this math, you just write down this formula. So putting that in here, we're looking for the payment. A is 64,000. 0.04 is our rate. And we're doing a N of one. So that pretty much just drops out. And all that is put under one minus one plus 0 0.04 to the negative N times T is negative 20. So you end up with that formula right there. which is equal to where my calculator go? Ah, oops. <clears throat> the test is a test. And that's why I don't like the fact that they tell me what I have to put on the test, by the way, and how much I have to make the test. People freak out and it's not what I want. The 1.04, to the 20, uh, oh, sorry, 1.04 to the 20 negative is 0.456. So I can copy this. So one minus that number is 0.54. 4361321. Three, which means, $4,709 and 23 cents.
So working for them for 20 years will get me $392 a month or maybe food budget. Yay. Okay. So there's that problem I ran through real quick. Um, does anyone have any other questions or types of problems they want to go over? Well, you're gonna have pseudo catch up soon. At least to know what types of questions are on there. Um, question 55 in the midterm X help. Okay. Uh, assignment. You gonna lock me out? Oh, well, I have to log in real quick. No, I didn't. The term review, last one. No oh, mortgage payments. Okay. So we are going to do mortgage payments. Save this, clear all drawings. <coughs> uh, what is the median house price in Phoenix? Okay. We're gonna take a house at order 5,000 which is apparently you guys' medium house price. I'm kind of glad I moved. Uh, let's say uh, you pay 20% somehow down payment and finance the rest at, uh, let's give you a good rate at 3% uh, for 30 years. Uh, so we want to know down payment first. Next, we want to go uh, amount financed will be second. Then we want to do monthly payment. And the last bit we want to look at is um, total cost of ownership. So the first part is the easiest part because it's the total amount that you put down. So 405,000 times 0 0.2 we have a price of the CSU price equals 405,000. Uh, the down payment equals 0 0.2. So the price or the down payment, uh, so the down payment is equal to the price times down payment percentage. So that's 405,000 times 0 0.2 which on my magic calculator that I keep on closing for some bizarre reason, would give us $81,000. So she put $81,000 down. Wish I had $81,000 to put down, uh, but that's beside the point. So the 405,000, so we have to do the amount of finance, you do uh, the price minus your down payment. So, 
The price is 405,000. The down payment is 81,000. So the amount financed is 405,000 minus 81,000 for $224,000. Get this part here. Now I have to get, make sure I have the right formula. For this. Uh, let's see here. And annuities, loans. So So in this one, we use uh, P0 is equal to the payment times one minus one plus R over N to the negative NT all over R over N. So we're doing the same thing we did for a basically retirement payout. We are looking for that payment. So let's go ahead and put the stuff in. So we do know the total price of the house is equal to the amount financed, which is $324,000. The, um, see, we had to find out R, which is the rate, which is 0 0.03. We had to find the number of payments. You're making 12 payments a year. And we have the time is equal to 30. We're doing it for 30 year mortgage. Let me smooth this down a little bit. <clears throat> so putting that in the formula, we get 324,000 is equal to the payment times one minus one plus the rate 0 0.03 divided by 12 to the negative 12 times 30. When all this is over, the rate 0 0.03 divided by 12. So real quick, so it gives us $324,000 is equal to the payment times one minus one plus 0 0.0025. Uh, which is three divided by 0 0.03 divided by 12. And that's to the negative, uh, then I take 12 times 30, which is negative 360. So I took the negative sign, 12 times three, 12, 24, 36, and then add a zero. And all this is over 0 0.0025, because this part here is the same as here. So then I want to go ahead and simplify this a bit. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by 0 0.0025 to get rid of the fraction. 810 here, <clears throat> and that's gonna be equal to the payment times one minus 1.0025, and that's the negative 360. So 1.0025 to the 360 negative is 0 0.407265. So the payment of one minus 0. 4070265, which means 810 is equal to the payment times 
0 0.592973453. And divide both sides by that. Let me move all these up. So that it makes sense. Oh, it was here. 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 Divided by zero point five nine five nine two seven three four five three two nine seven three four five three. So eight hundred ten divided by zero point five nine two nine seven three four five three. And this is the insane thing. So our payment is one thousand three hundred sixty-five dollars and or sixty-six dollars and zero cents. So, in the city of Phoenix, it is cheaper to buy a medium-sized house if you can afford the down payment and get financing than it would be to rent a a, a two-bedroom apartment or three-bedroom apartment. That makes a lot of sense. So the total cost to own is going to be equal to uh, too high. So that's the down payment plus your payment times n times t. So that would be eighty-one thousand dollars plus uh, we had sixteen. 33 times 12 times 30. Where'd my payment go? So that would give us, so 1633 times 12 times 30 is $587,000 at five eight seven. 880, and then we have $81,000 that you put down. So our total cost to own a house is $668,880. Houses are expensive. But it's still cheaper than renting, at least on the, the math. Uh, and that's a mortgage problem. And it's really sad when a, almost a half a million dollar house is cheaper than renting an apartment. Uh, what other questions we got? If you can afford eighty one thousand dollars, and I hate to say it, uh, uh, you're gonna probably have to wait a couple of years because the market's probably gonna crash. China's about to default on a bunch of property, so uh, hope everyone is more or less um, up on their mortgage because it's not gonna be very pretty. Remember what happened last time, right? So have fun, I'm sorry. You might actually, you might actually be saved by California instead of being ruined by California for once. Remember, I was very young when the market crashed. I think I was eight. I, if I would have had $4,000, I could have gone out and bought a house. My aunt and my mom had a house. It was supposed to be built, but then the market crashed. Yeah. Um, at that time. It's not fun. It's not fun. Yeah. And it's probably going to happen again. Yeah, I was in third grade, I think, when that happened. I don't remember. It was 2009. I, 
I really, really, really wish I would have just had like eight, ten thousand dollars because I could have gone and went in and bought a house, and then you know, ten years later, twenty years later, sold it. Sold it for more, for money. Well, they're right now. My dad owns a house in Awatuki for if we paid like two fifty for it. They're offering like four fifty five hundred thousand dollars cash, and it's like a, a small dinky little three bedroom in a retirement area so i can't even have like new techie people come in and take it they it's it's insane that's unsustainable even like out here my house i'm in right now we're paying 40 ish thousand for it but the it's insured value is two hundred fifty thousand dollars. i'm in the middle of nowhere it's i don't know anywho that's both of me ranting about the prices of properties oh uh, what other questions do we have mind you i have like almost two thousand square feet on two stories so you know so that was that was probably the most annoying one that you're gonna have um let me gander on stuff really quick um i'm looking i do not i'm checking to make sure you there is a mortgage problem on your test just so you know i there's also a um time value money solver on the top so if you're having trouble with the actual math you could um use this to do the same thing if you don't like doing the math they basically let you do the math without doing it Anything else we need to go over? I mean, those are annoying ones. We went over one and two last time. Let's see. Analysis, then your models. Uh, something. Yeah, we've kind of gone over everything. Um, if no one has any other questions, I'm not going to keep you that long for no particular reasons. Uh, if no one has any questions, that's okay. Um, you can use the rest of the time that you had kind of divvied out to start working on the homework, please. Um, we are going to have one more class period before the test. So please use your time appropriately and Sue will get caught up. Okay. If not,